starting our project of putting in a hog wire fence panel fence in our backyard. We've got all the strings laid and now we are digging holes for the posts, which we are gonna hopefully put in next week and hopefully it doesn't rain. Um, we have this auger rented. This was the one that cost like $80 for 24 hours. I would not recommend renting this for a project like this. If you live anywhere near me, we live in Southern Indiana and this, I don't know, I, I have never used an auger before, but uh, I thought it just kind of dig of the hole and I wouldn't have to do that much work, but I'd say it's almost just as much work as an actual post hole digger. about 20 feet to 10 inches. Whatever you don't hit the wrong button. Too late. Mm -hmm. This is the fence that I've got right now. Obviously, we're looking to uh, increase our space in our backyard because we have a pretty good sized backyard. So we're going to tear all this out and this is what I'm building and I'm almost done. I'm just got a couple more panels and then the gates basically you take this welded wire, I think this is four gauge wire, uh, you cut a groove in two by fours, you make a two by four frame, and then you stick this welded wire in here, screw it together, and then these are screwed into four by four posts that go down into the ground, obviously. Basically what you want to do is make these two horizontal boards, this one and that one, from that end to that end, you want to measure the space between the 4x4 posts that go into the ground, and that's the measurement for these boards. And then this measurement will be for whatever size uh, high your fence, because these come in different sizes, so those will vary, obviously. All right, so I got all that assembled. Um, I just used three inch screws on the outside here for each corner to cut these whatever you know width you want whatever works for you um, and I mean if you if your posts shift like mine did and they're not all the exact same measurement you know they're off by an eighth here or a quarter here um, it's really easy to make little corrections you know with this because you can make it whatever size you want also um, it's really handy to have a clamp like this to help hold this in place as you're assembling it because it will pop out of the grooves constantly um, if you're doing it alone. But you can just use a mallet. Uh, don't use a hammer, use something like this. I've used this so much during this project. Uh, just to kind of whack it into place. And then, you know, just go around the top, level it out. Uh, let's see, this piece down here, that's just a two by four for uh, sort of like a rot slash support board. Um, after that, you just want to screw it in. Put a few screws down here on each side. Same with this side, and then you're done. I just use pretty much like five or six screws, uh, you know, total. Uh, sometimes you might have a gap between the post uh, and your frame. That's another good reason to use a clamp like this. Just put it on there and close up your gap and then screw in and 
you're good. Also, you want to make sure you're level. Uh, make sure you're all the way down on the rot board so it's getting support. And then you're done with your panel and you get to go to your next one. So I'm going to measure for the next panel here. I'm clipped onto the other side of that 4x4, but I already measured that 4x4 and it's right at 3.5 inches. So I just have to subtract 3.5 from whatever I get here, which looks like about 97 and an 8. So I'll just subtract three and a half from that, and that'll be the length of this board for my next panel. Okay, so I'm on the final panel here. Just installed my uh, rot board. So that measurement was uh, 93 and 5 eighths. So it went in pretty well. Um, you don't want it to be super tight. And then ready for the panel. In this process, you just do over and over and over for however many panels you have, which I think I had 40. I just finished installing my panel fence, cattle panel fence. Just finished Hi, the Dad. gates. Hey, buddy. And uh, now the last step is to rip out this old fence so we can enjoy a much larger yard. And so can this guy. He has no idea what's about to happen. Bye, Brody. So I didn't actually take as much video as I would have liked while I was building the fence just because I was building it by myself for most of the time and I didn't have a free hand for the camera. So I just thought I'd make a post video and just kind of show a few things that I did, um, things that worked for me. Um, also, I just wanted to kind of put a disclaimer on here that I am not a fence builder. I'm not a woodworker, um, you know. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I'm just kind of watching YouTube videos and reading about stuff online and sort of figuring it out and going from there. Uh, there's several other videos online that I watched a lot and uh, so I'm just sort of offering mine up if, in case anybody wants to glean some information from this video. Hopefully they will. Um, so that's that. So the first thing I did was mark where I wanted the fence to be. Uh, and then I, you know, had to figure out my measurements for how big my panels were going to be. And then uh, that, you know, kind of helped me figure out where I was going to put my posts. And then, you know, I laid out my twine, um, all that. I'm not going to go over all that in detail. I did not worry about squaring this up with my house just because I don't really have like a symmetrical yard. It's kind of a, a weirdly shaped yard the way my house is angled off the road. So I just sort of eyeballed it most of the time. Um, I rented an auger from Home Depot and it had an eight inch, eight inch bit on it. I could get about halfway down and then it would just stop. And maybe I was doing it wrong. I don't know, I'd never used an auger before. But anyway, that's when this tool came in handy. Very, it's got a lot of weight to it so you can really generate a lot of power. But once I knew how long I wanted to make my panels, I just cut this board down, which is 93 and a half inches. And I just laid it on the ground next to the twine that I had set up. And then these are just two by four pieces. I would just use those to simulate what my four by fours were gonna be. And I would just put one of these on each end. Lay that down. And then I would just draw a mark up here with some spray paint. And that's how I, just so I didn't have to get my tape measure out every single time, because I had like 40 panels to make, that's how I marked my post holes. So after I had all the posts set, then I had to make my panels. So for this, I cut a dado groove out of two by fours. I went pretty deep. I probably shouldn't have gone that deep, but uh, I didn't really think about that until I was about halfway done with the project, so it was too late at that point. It seems to be fine. I mean, I, it's very stable. I can't, I don't see any bend or anything, but we'll see. Maybe I did it totally wrong and the fence will fall apart in six weeks. I don't know. You have to buy a special dado blade for this and then you just slide it right through here this thing's not plugged in so don't worry this is the dado blade this chipper inside here and then these two blades 60 bucks and it comes in a case like this uh just a tip whenever you're deciding how 
wide you want your panels to be. You probably want to stay a few inches under 8 feet, 96 inches, because not all boards are going to be exactly 96 inches. So if you make them a few inches under, like I did here, um, you will uh, be able to control for that. Uh, and also, if you go over, then you have to buy more boards, and then you're just going to have, I mean, if you have a 10-foot 2x4, then you're going to have, like, two feet hanging off of it, depending on how wide you make your panels, I guess. Anyway, I think this makes the most sense as far as being cost-effective. You just end up with one of these on the end of every one of your boards, so you use uh, pretty much all your board. For the actual fencing panel, um, I got this, I think it's called Sheep goat panel. I got this at Rural King. Um, I've also seen it at Tractor Supply. It comes in, uh, this was 48 inches tall uh, and uh, 16 feet wide. So it's kind of hard to uh, actually get it to your house um, just because it's 16 feet long or wide. Um, and then I believe it's four gauge. I think this is a 3 8 inch wide dado. Get it in there. I use a 24 inch set of bolt cutters. I got these from Lowe's. I think they were only maybe 30 bucks, which seemed very reasonable to me. Anyway, very easy to do with something like this. So I would definitely recommend a big set of bolt cutters like this. Another thing that I saw was you just make you put in your posts and your panels as you go along. So this would really only work, I think, if you had access to an auger for a longer period of time. Um, I only had mine for 24 hours, so I had to dig all my holes out at, the, at basically the same time. But what you would do is you would lay your post, you know, dig your hole, set your post, attach your rot board on the bottom, should have mentioned that, and then once you saw how far that was going to go, you would dig your next hole, set that post, and then put in your panel right there. So your panel would fit, you know, perfectly because you're doing it uh, as you're putting in this post over here. That would have been nice. I just didn't have that option because I only had the auger for uh, 24 hours. And obviously this was going to take longer than that. I actually just saw a video of a girl who did this. Um, recently after I was done with my fence and I wish I would have seen this beforehand because I think she may be onto something basically before she put the metal in she would have she already had all of her posts set and then she would drill in the sides and the bottom but she would leave the top off and then she would just take her whole panel of metal across until she got to about here and then she would just eyeball it and then she would just cut her metal right there and then just sort of finagle it in and then add the top and that looked actually a lot less physically demanding there was no you know hammering it into place or anything like that i wish i would have seen that beforehand i would have liked to try that i think that may have been the best option so one of the differences between my fence and the ones i've seen online is that mine is on a little bit more of a slope i mean i just stepped it down um and then I use the excess of the metal fence to fill in these gaps. And I might do something else with these. I add some dirt at some point, but for now, this fills in the gaps. Anyway, it works pretty well. Um, I wasn't sure how it would look, but I think it came out pretty well. This fence is great for somebody who wants to have a see-through fence just to keep your dogs in and your kids. We live next to this pond. We wanted to be able to see the water, but, uh, you know, still be able to not have to worry about our kids trying to kill themselves all the time. All right, so then I have this 45 degree turn. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this. I did a lot of research on what the best way to deal with something like this is. I thought about putting another post just right next to this, only angled like that. Um, I thought about just driving like a two by four wedge in here angled out like that ultimately i just bought some of these things from uh, lowe's i think 
these you can bend to whatever angle you want. I found them in the lumber area and then I just put three of them in there. And it's works in, working pretty well so far. It was, uh, it's July 5th. So this was aftermath from last night. Gotta clean that up. There's another gate. You know, I didn't have enough room here for an extra panel. So I just created a gate, which is really nice because you can make your gates whatever size you want them. You can customize your gates. Um, I might still do some more stuff. I might put a cross brace or something in here. Even though the fencing seems to be holding it pretty rigid. And then the fence starts to step back up on this side. And then I got my fourth gate over there. So that's it. That's my fence. He's happy. Your dog will thank you. I also forgot to mention that I did drill some uh, weep holes in the bottom of the groove so water will not collect in here and rust that out. Um, and one thing I wish I kind of would have thought of is when I put my rot boards in, I put them right in the middle of the 4x4 post because I kind of like the way that looks. But that means I had to drill my holes like at an angle down through the side. Otherwise I would have had to go like straight down through this entire uh, two by four, which uh, didn't want to do that. So um, just keep that in mind when you're deciding where you want to position this rot board. You know, we had a couple fence companies come in to do estimates on just like a regular chain link fence with wooden posts. I've heard that called California chain link before. And that was going to be over $5,000 for our space for a chain link fence. I like the way this looks much better than chain link. And for doing it myself, I mean, just for the supplies, it was about $3,000. And then I had to spend a couple hundred on um, a few tools that I didn't already have. So, I mean, I saved, you know, at least two grand doing it myself. It was hard work, but now I have the fence and I also have two grand. So... I think it was worth it to say oh one more thing um to the other few people who have videos of hog wire fences on youtube i just wanted to say thank you very much for putting your videos on there i don't think i would have attempted this without seeing somebody else do it first because it's quite an investment of money and time um so i just wanted to say thank you there's a guy in texas i think his name uh it's like gator underscore overland um I watched your video like at least 10 times. There's a, a lady somewhere, I'm not where she, sure where she is. Uh, her name is Abby. I watched your video tons of times. If you guys happen to see this video, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys. And I'll try to leave a, a link to your video on, my, uh, on this YouTube video as well, just because that helped me out a lot. So um, thank you very much. Hopefully this video can help somebody and um, just good luck with your project. I hope it goes really well. Leave a comment if you want. Um, I'm not really looking for, you know, subscribe. I'm not doing this for subscribers. I'm really just kind of wanted to pass this on in case somebody else could get something useful out of it. But anyway, thank you for watching and uh, good luck. Hey Brody. Do you notice any difference? Ready, go. What do you think, Broad?